Coming up on Rick Dancer TV, we're going to Wallowa County. You're ready to take a trip. Beautiful place. We're going to show you some places you need to visit. Plus, I'm going to take you out to Junction City, introduce you to a place where they have some amazing drinks for your Scandinavian festival this weekend. And a new guy's joining the show. Yeah, it's the Millennial Mind, a new segment on here. What's inside there? I'm not really all that sure. It's a little scary, but you're going to love it. So got any boogers? I'm not dead. That sounds like something interesting. Few people simply pass through Wallowa County. It's not a highway to any place else, but a road to a particular destination. A part of Oregon many valley dwellers have heard of, but few have experienced for themselves. Pictures, video, and the interviews you will see can entice you, but in person, Wallowa County will connect you. I really don't think that there's been a, a new stick-built house built in Lost Teen in probably 40 years. Small to slow traffic as visitors make their way to the end of the pavement, to the very edge of Oregon. Those who live here will fight to keep it this way. Slightly touched, underdeveloped, wild, and unknown. No, no, we're very clannish. We don't Come to visit, that's fine, but don't. Yeah. A county with not one stoplight. Not one. Fast food, not welcome either. People here don't want fast food. The local restaurants, everybody has their favorite. And they, that's, they don't branch out a lot. What is Wallowa County? Who lives here? What you see is what here who stays in this land commonly known as Switzerland of America. 3,152 square miles of craters, prairie, hillsides, rivers, and those mountains. 7,220 folks call this county home. That's fewer than live in the city limits of Cottage Grove. I've lived here all my life and been what you call a hillbilly all my life. <laughs> Not everyone is a self-proclaimed hillbilly most simple, independent people. I think the pace of life here, it's kind of kicked back, not very frantic, you know. Small towns, you bet. For me, it's still the lifestyle, the surroundings, and, and the people. I just enjoy it here. A place where wide open space is more important than a savings account. A spot you eke out a living, much like those before you did. I do odd jobs for people. I did. I've kind of quit doing that. Few complain. It's the cost of living here. Wallowa Lake brings the tourists, always has. Legends of a monster 180 feet long living at the bottom of that lake, not enough to scare people away. First sighting, 1885. The last, later. Quiet for now. As we visit the different towns, you will hear reoccurring themes. We, I live in that subdivision up there, and we got a bunch of outsiders moved in there. I can't say that I'm happy about the situation at all. Don't be offended. What do you think of liberals? Uh, not too good. Those mountains, this land, worth protecting. But keep your ideas to yourself. What do you think of environmentalists? Oh, we don't like environmentalists. The old, the new, protected, guarded by tradition and those mountains. Wallowa County, the not-so-wild west, the edge of Oregon. We're at the end of the road. We're the end of the road. It's a place you come back to. So, you know how it's kind of my thing to give people a voice, and I like to hear all kinds of people talk, and uh, 
I have this friend on Facebook named Michael Coombs, and we were talking one day, and I saw this video that he shot of himself, and he's a little wacky sometimes, but I saw this video, and I thought, you know what? I think I could bring you on this show, so we're going to start this new little segment and air it as much as we can, because he has a job, too, but the guy's got a really interesting story, and he is a millennial, and I think it's time that we have a different view of the millennial age and these people, so here's Michael's debut, and we're going to have a lot more from him coming up in the coming show so Michael take it away oh. hi I'm Michael Coombs of Millennial Minds when I'm when I'm talking with other Millennials like myself we're a, we speak exactly how we feel we're able to say what we say what we want to say but when we're speaking to other generations and everything like that no we have to water it down we feel like you don't want to ruffle too many feathers Rick asked me do I have any hope and hope to me it's it's a scary subject right now in today's world with all the wars, ISIS, the scary stuff going down in Mexico. I don't like to talk about it. I've seen enough YouTube videos on it, but it's scary. There's a lot of, there's also, there is hope. There's things that do lift you up, you know, people around the community helping each other out. There's little things like that, the little people doing things. But in the bigger picture, it's very scary. You hear people all the time, you hear millennials all the time saying, I can't believe I'm having babies. I can't believe I'm bringing kids into this world. It's a scary thought. Yeah, we're sick of, you know, hearing politicians saying one thing and then never doing it. You know, that's why I think when, you know, Obama came out with we need a change, I think that was his whole skew on it because he a lot of people gave a lot of promises and never followed through with them. And I think our generation is looking for someone. We want somebody to actually follow through with what they're going to say. I had my first drink when I was seven years old and I sporadically used it until I was older and could get a constant supply. I had no future. I mean, all I was laying there is I was drinking until I passed out. I was drinking for oblivion. I didn't want to come to again. People can walk in when they are ready and we, we're here. We're ready to get them plugged into the services that they do need. And it's not just about only substance abuse or mental health or primary care. We have all these services at one place, one location. I noticed it had elevated quite a bit. Uh, by the time of uh, the end of the group. Here at the Rapid Access Center, we have primary medical care, we have behavioral health, mental health services, and we have substance abuse treatment along with case management and peer support. But really what I think that it boils down to for people is it gives them hope. They're given that little glimmer, that little piece that, you know what, maybe there is a different way of life and I can do this too. I ended up, by the grace of God, going through Willamette family, through their detox and also their in-house patient, and as a result of a lot of help from the counselors there, the staff there, uh, the nurse practitioner, and a therapist, I now stand here before you sober and happy. I believe I'm becoming the man that I was originally created to be. Hope is the big thing. I know it says health, wellness, and recovery, but if I could rewrite it, it would be hope, health, wellness, and recovery. And we're here with Darren Roby from HungryDucks.com. I love what you're doing. We sat down the other day and had a beer and we were talking about what his business is about. And I think it's a cool idea and I love that you're doing this. You've got the idea, it's a delivery service for businesses and you got this from Colorado. Yeah, yeah, I went to school at the University of Colorado uh, and helped run a similar type of business. It was called Hungry Buffs uh, for the Colorado Buffaloes and it did really well. So when I graduated uh, college, I came out here looking at grad school and I thought, Eugene would just be the perfect place for this type of business. So what do you do? I mean, you really are a delivery service then. Yeah, we do online ordering and delivery for over 40 restaurants around town. So when we first started out, uh, it was really popular with just the college students. We've been kind of branching out since then. Uh, so we have over 40 restaurants with tons of different cuisines, tons of different specials. So I like to kind of compare it to an online delivery food court where you're hungry, you're looking for something to eat. You can come on the website, compare different menus, prices, specials, and then make your decision based on that. Yeah, because how many times am my wife and I sitting around going, okay, you always think of pizza and you think of Chinese food, but you don't ever think of anything else. It's like, well, where else can we take out? We don't want to just, you know, go and eat dinner. We want to go home. And that's, that's, that's a great idea. You are a food cart. You yeah. are the original food cart by car. I don't have to even go home. Exactly. You got it. What I will tell you, you know, about our food is that we prepare everything from scratch. So we make sure we hire people that have the passion for making food. 
that's one of the ingredients. The other one, we make sure that our recipes, they use the ingredients that we tell them to use. And we, before we uh, put it into the market, we make sure we test, you know, try it. What I love about this business is the people. I'm a people person, so I love to interact with people. And I love to make people feel good. Dance. Hannah, come on. My mom just called. I'm going to stay with my friends. My mom's picking me up later. Fine. Who's that? Nothing. Is that him? It's nothing. You know it's kind of creepy that he's texting you yeah. over and over again. He knows it. He knows you're with us. Hannah, I'm really worried about you. I really think we should tell someone. Is it a phone or a leash? Hannah, I'm really worried about you. So the Scandinavian Festival is this coming weekend. It starts on Thursday, I think. But when you're out there, you don't want to spend your whole time wandering around the park with those Vikings coming at you. So there's a place in town called the Rodeo Steakhouse and Grill, and they have some of the best drinks, and it has food in it. I mean, a lot of food. Watch. And so we have two great drinks that we're well known for. Okay, wait till you hear this. This is, this is like a drink in a meal. Oh yeah, one is the Bacon Cheese Bloody Mary which it comes with a little uh, bacon cheese burger, it comes with the shrimp, it comes with cheese, it comes with a little salt cheese on it, and all the vegetables that a Bloody Mary has. is is the number one seller Bloody Mary. Okay, and your other drink that you're The drinking. Loco Rita, That's, we just came out with that one. It's a meal and a drink at the same time. And it comes with, you know, the chicken wings, it comes with the uh, jalapeno poppers, it comes with uh, the fried dill pickles, and it comes with uh, uh, sweet peppers. And so, somewhere in there, there's a margarita. Yeah, the local rate. Oh, a song, yeah. But in the bottle, there's the margarita there. Yes. The pizza's here. Hurry, oh hurry. Oh, my goodness. Oh, whoa. What? Come what? look at this. Size matters. That's the biggest one I've ever seen. Look at that. <laughs> oh, well, I could have told you that. Wow, that is huge. Wow. Thanks, Mark. But wait, I've got more in the back. <laughs> in this car? This little size car? Thanks, Mark. Hey, it's, thanks for bringing these out here. I really appreciate it. No problem. Emma's really hungry tonight. Whoa, here, whoa, here whoa, whoa. She can help us out. You know, I love the way the video turned out. I think it's going to be really cool. Oh People God. are really going to like it. Hold on. It's just awesome. Can Thank I like on. Firewood? It's okay. Yeah, no, okay. don't worry about that. Oh, okay. You okay? Oh, uh -huh. no, she, no, she's fine. Don't oh, worry about it, Mark. She's oh, really. Okay. Em does this all the time. She's you used know, to eating. I'm not super there she goes. Okay, oh, good. Okay. So, anyway, it was really good of you bring those all the way out so here. I... Em, I'll be in in a second. Um, In October 2007, my hands got cold. And then they started getting really painful. A few months later, they started in the middle of the night. My thumbs and this finger here on both hands would wake me up and the pain was really bad from tingling like they were asleep. The pain was excruciating and then gradually they started turning translucent. I'd be driving down the road and the pain would shoot down through my hands so bad I'd have to let go of the steering wheel. I don't know how I'd survive. It took me a year and a half and I had gone through five doctors and the fifth one was a PA. And because my skin had gotten so tight you couldn't pinch it, my mouth had shrunk, she knew that it was scleroderma. Scleroderma is an autoimmune disease which is sometimes progressive and, and sometimes fatal because what it does is it causes fibrosis which is caused from collagen buildup and there's two types of systemic scleroderma. One is limited and one is diffuse. Diffuse is the worst. That's the one I have. What scleroderma has done to me is 
uh, taken my muscles uh, away from me. I mean, it made them very, very weak. Um, I have stage four kidney disease with just the one kidney. I have a hiatal hernia. Uh, my esophagus is messed up. I have an aneurysm in my heart, and I have pulmonary fibrosis on my lungs, which makes Get, get me shortness of breath. Otherwise, I can't function like a normal human being anymore. Uh, cancer of my shoulder, cancer of my uh, cheek, and then a couple of months later, it was in my vagina. It is hell. It is hell. My life and our life, <laughs> the last five years, has been pure hell. I have to fight for awareness because it's been a hidden disease for 260 years because the medical field feels that it's too difficult and confusing to go out and, and take care of patients, provide care for patients, because it's too difficult and confusing to diagnose, well, where does that leave the patient? A year and a half for me to get a diagnosis, and some scleroderma patient takes eight to 10 years. What motivates me is the people that are dying from scleroderma and they don't know how to voice their opinion. And I look at it this way, um, what have I got to lose? I don't have anything to lose. I have to get out there. I, I'm just a little person that started this foundation to get the publicity for this because the, the faster you're diagnosed with this, the quicker they can treat the symptoms. You can't treat scleroderma, but you can treat the symptoms. Being di diagnosed with cancer changes your life. Um, having surgeries, you know, I was just focused on getting through it. I didn't understand the extent of it. It's a long journey, you know. I, I was um, I had limited range of motion, and we had to do a lot of manual work, and I had to do a lot of re-educating my my body to do what it was doing before. The doctors are the people that help the patients beat cancer. What we do is we help people get back to living the life that they love. I, I had no idea, and I was well informed. But the, as fantastic as my doctors were, I don't even think they understand um, what happens after cancer. I, you know, I don't, I don't think you can understand it until you go through it. You know, we've developed um, a niche in taking care of cancer patients. I have never felt so weak and vulnerable my whole life. Um, so to have the physical therapist and the massage therapist and the acupuncturist help me um, get my strength back, I have no words to describe how grateful I am for that. I think that in some ways, all of us here went through cancer with Mary. Now our staff knows how to really help people physically and we take care of them emotionally too. And that's a pretty great feeling. Physical therapy and all of the other therapies that we offer here have really helped get me back to living the life I love. And that's what we'll do for you. Have you guys seen the new magazine out on the streets here in Lane County? I love this. It's Lane Monthly. It's in paper boxes and in just places all over where you find other newspapers. What I love about this is it's about the people and the places, events, and different products around the community that make this region such a great place to live. It's why we're all here. It's a lot like what Rick Dancer is trying to do on the TV show. But I love the feel of this and you look inside, there's gardening articles, different ways to celebrate Earth Day and this is the last month issue. Just all kinds of a calendar of events. It is such a fun thing and I love the way when you pick it up 
It feels like kind of in between a magazine and a newspaper. You got to check it out. It's locally produced, like locally published, and everything in here is local. Lane Monthly. You do not want to miss it if you want to know what's going on around town. So way back when I didn't even have a television show yet and I was just shooting videos, I had this friend named Adam Marshall and uh, he spent his life in a wheelchair and he got so sick and tired of people always noticing the wheelchair and not noticing him that we were talking one day and I shot this video of him um, and his story and what I need to tell you is uh, he, he passed away a couple of years ago but what I love about having him on video is his words and what he said still matter. Watch. Hi, I'm Adam Marshall and I'm uh, 24 years old. I have Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. I was born with it, it's a genetic disorder. Oh, toileting, you know, transferring, any lifting, uh, preparing my meals, cutting up my, my steaks, my hamburger, whatever. Um, the whole shebang, They're things that, that you know, physically normal people uh, could do easily, I have to have help with. I get people who just, they, they look at the machine more than the person and um, they already start making their judgments and uh, I would have to say Jesus Christ, without him I couldn't, I couldn't do this, with, uh, I couldn't cope with, with everything that's going on around me without him. To me, there's, there's almost a point where I have more mobility now that, that I believe what I believe now, and I'm not afraid. I feel like those, that's something that has unchained me from my prison. Throwing away society's chains that are on it, on me, throwing those away. Once you take those off, you, you can just live your life however you want it to, how, however you want to live it, and it just feels like nothing nothing could stop you. You're just so. Can you tell me what the chains look like? Like when you say society's chains, what, what, what does that look like to you? What do you mean? It's people's first impressions of me, somebody they might look upon as, and I've gotten this a lot too, as somebody with a mental disability even though they have an apparent physical disability. That's something that is one of those chains that, you know, you just, as somebody who's disabled, you gotta just throw it away. How do you keep the chair from defining you? By reaching out to people and showing them on purpose that I'm, I'm more than just what I look like. I'm happy with who I am. The, the people would think, oh, don't you wish you could walk? Uh, no, it's because it's what, what I've been given and I like the person that I am and I love being funny and I, and I love being able to reach people on a different level than, than I could if I was physically normal. Security is, is just being happy with with the way things are, your surroundings, um, and and not being afraid, and having having that around you to not be afraid. And for me, uh, it's it's been God for quite some time now. And you know, when you have somebody that great looking over you, then who needs anybody else? So, Kathy and I spend, what, 50 bucks a month going to a gym so we can sit in a gym and climb on a Stairmaster to get a workout. Wow. So right over there, there's a bunch of lightning strikes. Listen to that. We've been running two and a half miles down that hill because <clears throat> our car's parked. And we... <laughs> oh, 
it. And I don't want to get hit with a bolt of lightning. So we just made it in time. It's hailing. We couldn't do what we do without partnerships with local newspapers and media sources. Springfield Times, Crestwell Chronicle, great paper, still have enormous value in their communities. In fact, I get them delivered to my house. You should too. I don't live, I live in Springfield. I don't live in Crestwell, but I want to know what's going on down there as well. And these are still old fashioned journalism where they're really covering stories in towns and reports. And, and I like that. So we support them and they support us. Also McKinsey River Reflections. Um, they do a lot of good work up the McKinsey. I live up that way. Keep you informed on some of the things going on in the community. So check out those different papers. Just because you live in Eugene doesn't mean you can't get a paper from another area. And uh, it really is old fashioned reporting the way we used to do it. One last thing I want to remind you about is Rick Dancer Media Services. We do a lot of things, everything from social media to videos for YouTube, videos for our show, videos for your website. We can produce a show from your location. Give us a call. We're really reasonable and we want to get the message out and help you. And so give me a call. My phone number is right there on the screen or go to my website, rickdancer.com or rickdancer.tv and let me know what we can do for you and let's chat. Now tonight we want to leave with this. Over the years, I think I've interviewed thousands and thousands of people, and a lot of them have touched me in very personal ways, but none as much as this man you're about to meet. He changed the way I think about so many things. We went back and we found Jimmy Reynolds. Take a look. A few years ago, while interviewing a man named Jimmy Reynolds, my view of life, God, and other people was changed by one thought. Jimmy has elephantiasis. I asked him, what do you see when you look in the mirror? Jimmy said something that rocked my world. I was a made in God's image. So therefore, I was like by God. Yes, Jimmy said he was created in the image of God. Therefore, God must look like him. I was floored. What if Jimmy is right? What if God doesn't look like all the paintings or the Hollywood stars or even George Burns for goodness sake? What if God looks more like Jimmy Reynolds? You have to admit, that changes everything. Imagine that. It really does make you wonder. I love that guy. Well, until next week, keep those good ideas percolating. I'm Michael Coombs, and this is Millennial Mind. Dang it, I keep messing up. Okay. And I'm a Millennial Mind. Just happened. It's there. Yeah, it's called cupcaking. Cupcake. When it's your girlfriend, it's called cupcaking. That's what Millennials call it. We on? Yeah. All right. How's that? Really good. Thank you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> All right.